Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this. Uh, it's uh, June the 14th, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. It's a Monday. We all love Mondays, don't we, guys? <laughs> Listen, let's get started. We're, what we're going to talk about is hyperinflation. We got a hyperinflation coming. And one of the big reasons why is the Fed is the mechanism that they use to slow down inflation is broken. Typically, what they do is let interest rates go up or they raise interest rates. And that's uh, Paul. That's the tool that Paul Volcker used to stop the last inflation. Well, we're in the first stages of inflation. Inflation is a self-perpetuating, self-feeding cycle. So the more powerful it gets, the more powerful power it gets behind it, the more power it gets behind it. In other words, it gets faster and faster and faster. It's like a train. It's like it gains momentum. And they can't slow it down at this point. We're not quite into the acceleration phase yet of a hyperinflation. Where we are right now is we are entering into the getting ready to enter into the acceleration phase. Inflation is not quite high enough to be in the acceleration phase. Now the acceleration phase generally will last six months or a year or even two years. It can last quite a long time and that's when inflation is going faster and faster and faster and faster but it's still not hyperinflation. So we're quite a little ways yet away from the hyperinflation, but I don't see any, they don't have any method to turn us around and go back. They're like a, a giant uh, freight ship that's in a canal, and the canal's not wide enough to turn the ship around. There's a waterfalls up ahead. They know about the waterfalls. The captain's saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And he's running around on the deck like a crazy man. Should we throw over the anchor? Well, that's the Fed deciding to taper or, or deciding to uh, tighten. They can't do it. <laughs> uh, well, they can do it, but it's not going to help. We're still going to drift toward that waterfall. and Eventually, we're going to get there. Uh, so now, what are you going to do with your own personal finance in a hyperinflation? Well, we're going to discuss everything. What have you got right now? We're going to take a look at it. We're going to analyze it, how well it will do in a hyperinflation. So let's get started. Let's uh, open up the charts right here and take a look at this. Uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the first page I made for you guys. Okay, you can't see it there. I have to open it in paint. Open with paint. There, now you can see it. Have you got money market funds? Well, only going to gain point against, now this is against the hyperinflation. This is when we're in the hyperinflation, how much are they going to gain? Well, because they got a minuscule amount of interest, they do gain a little bit, 0.0002% against the hyperinflation. Now remember, the things that have a higher percentage is the things that you want during a hyperinflation. So that's a very, very small percentage. Cash, nothing, 0%. You don't gain anything with cash in a hyperinflation. So you got a money market fund, you got cash, you got CDs, they don't gain much either. All of these items here don't gain hardly anything against the hyperinflation because they're very deeply denominated in dollars. CDs, bonds, CLOs, CDOs, and they have a red flag on them because they're dangerous. So these are the things you got. You got to really beware because these are the worst things to have in a hyperinflation. Now let's move on and take a look at the next next one. Let's open it again in paint. Now this is if you're invested in the Dow Jones. The S&P 500, the Russell 2000, you got stocks. You're going to gain a full 40% against the hyperinflation. Now, isn't that a lot better than 0 0.0002? 40 full percent? That's like a thousand times better to be in the Dow Jones during a hyperinflation. You're going to get 40%. That's not too bad. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, guys. It's better. These things are better. Your job. 
Keep your job. Your job is going to gain against the hyperinflation by about 30%. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's going to gain against the hyperinflation. If you got commercial real estate, it's going to gain about 8%. But you know, it's residential real estate. Gains a lot better than commercial real estate. 35% gain. On now, these are just my estimates. Don't take this to the bank. I'm just estimating what, what you're going to get. Farmland, 45%. So farmland is even better than the Dow Jones against the hyperinflation. Okay, let's move on. Next page, and we're going to take a look at more stuff here. Uh, I guess we got to close out this page first. Whoop. I had it. Just a second. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one here uh, is this one. No, I got to open it in, in paint. I forgot. Sorry, guys. Give me a second here. <laughs> paint. Here we go. Electronics. Things you own around the house, like your television and stuff. Yes, they're going to go up against the hyperinflation. 20%. Tools you own. Tools are really good, but they're not real practical because they take up a lot of space. They're heavy. People can steal them, and there's going to be an awful lot of stealing going on during the hyperinflation. And tools are going to be something that they're just going to love to steal during a hyperinflation. But tools are going to go up like 120% against the hyperinflation, which is really high numbers. How Over 100% is really high numbers. 120% against the hyperinflation for tools. Things like power saws, hand saws, it uh, doesn't matter, drills, uh, uh, things like uh, shovels, and things, that, things that are useful, things that are in the real world, tools are going to go up an enormous amount, 120%. Cars, got a good car? Going to go up 90%. That's a lot against the hyperinflation. Appliances, going to go up 60% against the hyperinflation. Furniture and clothing depends on what you got. Some things are going to go up 80%. Some things are only going to go up about 20%, but they're going to go up. And there's, these are still a lot. These are these are high percentages. So these are good things to have against a hyperinflation. Everything's going to become more valuable in a hyperinflation. Okay, let's move on to the next page here. Uh, and uh, we're going to remember this time to open it up in paint. Now, these are the really big ones, and they're in red. These are the really things that's going to earn you the most percentage against the hyperinflation. And we're going to discuss which one is the winner here of all of them. Gold is extremely practical to have in a hyperinflation. And it's probably your safest asset to own. It's almost like a guaranteed 250% gold. Why I say it's practical? Because it can fit in a small space. It can be hidden from the thieves. There's going to be a lot of thieves during the hyperinflation. you got to take that into consideration. I mean, gold is so small and takes up such a small area that this makes it immensely practical. The fact that it exists in the real world and it's not online, makes it immensely practical in a hyperinflation. So gold is right up there in the top things to have during the hyperinflation. Copper is good to have, and it's going to make better gains than gold. Except, guys, big exception, it's not practical to have. It's easy to have stolen. It's hard to hide. It takes up a lot of space. Thieves can steal it. You know, during a hyperinflation, so it's not practical, but it's going to make better gains than gold. Silver. This is a hands-down winner in a hyperinflation. Because look at the numbers it's going to make. It's going to make like 800%. Better than gold. It's going to do better than gold. Multiples better than gold. It's still small enough where it's practical. I mean, 10 pounds of silver, you know, can be hidden away someplace just like gold you know and, and it's it's much more smaller than copper and easier to hide away someplace you know during the hyperinflation to keep it away from thieves uh it's it's going to go up massively during the hyperinflation silver is your hands down winner it exists in the real world 
So if the internet goes down, it's not going to disappear on you. Silver is a hands-down winner in a hyperinflation. It's the champion of the things you, you want to have, of the best things. Alternative cryptocurrencies, uh, like the alternative coins, what they call the altcoins. There's another thing about silver that makes it the big winner is there's very little downside risk to it, your money. But this is what we're going to talk about and I've put red flags and alerts on these two. The alternative cryptocurrencies, which is the altcoins. You could make massive gains against the hyperinflation. Probably from 200 to 3,000%. So you can make a higher percent than in silver. But extremely risky. Well, if the internet goes down wide areas how are you going to use your alternative cryptocurrencies uh what if the government turns on them and the price drops the bottom drops out of the price there's so many dangers it is extremely high risk but it's extremely high reward too bitcoin itself is now we're going to talk about bitcoin bitcoin is trying to become what bitcoin is trying to become is the world store of value for the entire world it's going to either make it or it's going to break it it's either going to make it or it's not this is why it's red flag risky because it's either going to be worth almost zero or it's going to go up to be the world champion for storing money away from for the rich it's all or nothing, in other words, with Bitcoin. Bitcoin could go up as much as 20,000%. It is possible if it becomes the world store of value for all the people in the world, the rich people, they all have their money sucked away in Bitcoin. It could be worth massive amounts of money, but it's terribly risky. And this is why it's not the winner. The winner is silver, even though it's not going to go up near as much as Bitcoin would if Bitcoin is successful. Still, it's 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 a safe. It's safe. Bitcoin is not safe. The alternative cryptocurrencies are not safe. But your gains are much greater. The possible gains. So now that we got this out of the way, let's get in there and let's take a look at the markets today and see what's going on. What we're looking at is silver today is down a penny right now, all down two cents. Twenty-seven ninety-one for silver today. Now let's take a look at gold. Now you have to understand something, guys, about these charts I drew for you guys. They're just my estimations of where I think that you're going to make out best in a hyperinflation. It's not about your investments now. It's about your investments, what your investments are going to do two years from now. When we're either in the middle of the acceleration phase or we're, we're entering into the first stage of the hyperinflation itself. And don't underestimate the power of the acceleration phase. You can have uh, as much as 500%. Your fiat currency could be going down like... Uh, Okay, I'll give you an example. During an acceleration phase, in one year, your dollar could be chopped down to 25 cents in its purchasing power. In one year of the acceleration phase. That's not hyperinflation, though. That's the lead-in period. Okay, here we are. Gold, 1863. Down $14.30. Now let's take a look at cryptos and see what they're doing. Cryptos are, are up a little bit. We're looking at over $40,000 for Bitcoin today, 40592 So Bitcoin is starting to come back a little bit right now, starting to bounce back, starting to warm up a little bit. Your top coins, you know, Ethereum, 2552 and uh, Cardano, uh, 157 Okay, now let's take a look at the Dow and see what the Dow's doing today. The Dow's down 214 points. Um, 
there's very much fear out there of deflation right now, and the, the Dow can react to this. If they see bond yields going up a little bit, they're expecting bond yields to pop up and go up high. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I don't think that the bond yields are going to take off like that. I'm kind of expecting around 2% by the end of the year. But, uh, you know, if the 10-year goes over 2.25%, the Fed is going to start to enact yield curve control. They're not going to let these yields go up too high. They'll step in. And so, the way I see it is, if bond yields do decide to go up, the Fed's just going to step in at a certain point. And then it's game over, guys. <laughs> you know, if they have to do yield curve control. And, uh, okay, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil. Just like I said, it's creeping up there. 71.54 today for crude oil. Now let's take a look at uh, the move index. And the move index is slowly descending. 50.85 right now. And it's down of 4.14 points or 7.53 percent bonds and rates today we're seeing the bond yields go up a little bit today and this is hard on precious metals when bond yields start to go up it's also uh, it's also uh, hard on the markets it's hard on everything as, as far as inflation it, try, it tends to push things toward deflation we're up three basis points today. We're up at 1.492 on the U.S. 10-year. But, you know, it was up over 1.7 there not that long ago. And everybody thought it was going to go a lot higher, but it didn't. It went back down again. And uh, I see these yields, you know, staying in a trend between 1.5 and 2%. And if they do start to go up, I'm talking about the 10-year, of course. If they do start to go up too high, the Fed's just going to knock them back down again. They, they can't allow it because it would break their system apart that they got. Structurally, this system is completely unsound. And the thing about it is, is it can only withstand certain things. It can't withstand high interest rates. And so they won't allow it. It's just as simple as that. Okay, the U.S. dollar index today. What we're looking at is a descending dollar index. And this is the only thing that's holding gold up right now to keep it from going uh, silver right now. It's a descending dollar index uh, because yields are going up a little bit on the U.S. Treasuries. And this is the last hope for these deflationists who believe we're going to go into a great deflation is the hope that the Treasuries are going to go up and the yields are going to go up. They're, th they're thinking to themselves, oh, they're going to go up to 3 4% pretty darn soon. Nope, sorry, guys. Ain't going to happen. First off, if they go over 2.25 or 2.5 percent on the U.S. 10-year, the, the Federal Reserve is going to step in and put the clampers on it. And don't underestimate their power. They don't like to use that power unless they have to. They're not going to use that power. It's called yield curve control. They won't use it unless they absolutely have to because it's like a last resort. The second that they use that power, we would be heading into hyperinflation very quickly. We might not. We might just skip right over the acceleration phase. <laughs> anyway, listen, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye, bye.